hello everyone. Uh, we are starting our new the remaining sessions for our tidyverse. So we're on power package, and now uh, I will discuss the plug and the vector transformations under the power package. Okay, so I should start. So actually, under the plucking, we have many functions with the names of pluck and some other names are like chuck as well. Uh, but I will start the, from the first main function, which is the plug function. Um, the purpose of this is actually to index elements inside the list, which are hidden something inside and we have some nested lists ne nested lists can be we can have some some kind of nested lists so the plug function actually pulls out the elements from that list and we can index those elements and the uh, elements uh, the arguments it, it accepts is the dot x should be a vector or some kind of environment and then it in these three dots we need to give the index from which we want to get the element so for example, I made some related to our cohort, some two, two lists. Um, it has one element and then a list with some other elements as well, with the with a attribute of the list as well, two attributes. And then I combine them into one X list. So the structure of the final list could be this one. And then I want to apply the plug function on it. So in the plug function, actually in these three dots, we can apply uh, either integer or a string or a function to get the elements from the list. So if I apply the integer one, I, I will show the other as well. So this will get the first element from the list which is actually kind of the same if we want to do that with this format. This is a different example, but uh, the plug function does this, this, this but with sim simple code, with only the plug and the X and the one. So it will get the first element in our, this list, which is actually this object one. So that's why we have these three output, which is actually, these three elements. So by giving it the integer one, I will pluck the first element from the list. And we can actually go in the backward direction as well with the index minus one. And in that case, it will give me this object two, the last element from the list. And we have other options as well. Uh, for example, instead of plucking from the first position, we can use this format as well, which will go in the first element, this object one, and then it will give me the second in that. So in this first element, for example, we have, this one is the first and this one is the second. So that's why from here, I get this and this, this 12, these two entities in the list. So, which is actually kind of the same if we want to do this format in our list. So, this course looks kind of a neat and it gives the same output um, and easy to understand. But in this format, we, we should have to, we need to put lots of brackets and then indexing. For example, when you look at this, this example, it's coming up. We have like six to seven brackets closing. Uh, again and uh, starting. Okay, and then we can index the elements from the list in this format as well, which is that we supply the names of the list. In our list, we have a name for this entity, the ELT. That's why I am providing that in the list X, in the first element, go to the second one and that get in the second one, what was the name of the uh, element? That's why I get this one. So it gives multiple options as well. We can combine the integer and the names and the strings uh, to get the elements from our from a list with many levels. 
And this example is comparable to this, this code if we want to use the simple indexing. Okay, and uh, it will give us some kind of error like null because we have given the index 10, which is not an element present in our list. We have only two elements, object one and object two. Uh, so if I put X uh, and then index to pluck the element from the index 10, it will give me null because there is no element in there. And there is an option that we can put the, the dot default argument to some kind of message as well. That's why I have written it like value doesn't exist at the index position 10. So it can be handy sometimes, so like for example, we want to show the message that the final index is two or three or some 50 something. So we can show that in our message. And in the documentation, they say that the map character in our per package function also uses this kind of behavior. That's why uh, in in the list x from both the uh, objects we get the first element the sha and the jack. But this behavior is kind of different uh, than our pluck l function. But they mentioned that I'm not sure how it is working inside because in the pluck function the uh, outputs were a bit different okay and then i told before that we can use either integer string or a function that's why i have designed some custom function some very simple function to get elements from this list uh, this is a different list in here that uh, i i chose one column from the empty cars and one column from star wars and they name them with Star Wars and cars uh, attributes in the list. So, and then I designed very simple function that from this list, get the first element and show the output of it. That's why this one is getting the first element from this one, uh, from this list, this list, which is actually the first element is this this list not the first one so from that and then i put the argument that with the by using this function give me the output which is kind of equal to this function so if we compare this and this code uh, it will be easy to read but the outputs uh, can be similar if we want to use the square brackets and then I forgot to mention that there are some options to use the dynamic dots in here as well. We have this option in this function, the plus function. That's why if we, uh, in this example, for example, this one, uh, it gets the arguments from other function as well, my, my element. That's why if in this list, I apply the uh, sorry, the X list, this one, if I apply this new function, which is using the dynamic dots, the output remains the same. So there, there are some options. I think there is some other name, Jack, you were mentioning for the three dots. Is there dynamic dots or what are, what are they called? I forgot. Yeah, I think they're also like, is it triple bang or something like yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah that that thing yeah yeah but i i think in this case it's just called like splicing yeah okay but uh they use this terminology dynamic dots in there so okay but it yeah. is functionality works in here so okay and then comes the this plug function with some kind of assignment operator the where uh, the out this is this becomes handy because it allows to modify the object deep in the nested structure. So, for example, in my uh, this list, the first element is the column from the empty cars, and I want to modify this with string mo modified cars. That's why I use this assignment operator and modify my final list so when the output is modified uh, the, when the list is modified this is the output 
So the first element is actually completely modified and a new string comes in here and it, it can be used to uh, modify one, one of the elements or go and we, or we can go deeper into the our nested structure of the list and modify the elements. And pluck exits actually it is used to tell if the object is actually present in our list. And we can mention that with the help of the name of the list as well. Like for example, if I have this list inside the X, it has the name star str wars. I can use this name to check if this list exists in the main X list. So that's why if I use this function in my X list at the second plug position, is there an list with the name Star Wars and it says true. So it is just to comes and handy to check if there if there is some list existing in our uh, nested structure. Okay, and then so the Shaw, actually, if I could ask a question on that last last one, the yeah. plug exists. I'm wondering if if there's um, I wonder if there's like a predicate functional that would do this because I'm kind of thinking, and I don't know, it might be something like check if it exists and if it exists, give me the thing. Um, but here it's just, yeah. I mean, this is a function that just tells me whether the thing exists. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I'm not uh, actually sure about the predicate functions you have presented that. So maybe you have some idea if there is some function in here. I don't remember actually. Yeah, it's been a little while. I could, I could, I could Google it, but I was just kind of thinking like in terms of, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll, have to, I'll have to keep thinking about that, like somehow to conditionally pluck, if I could put it that way. It's like pluck if it exists. Yeah, yeah, it can be handy. So in three dots, they say that these are the list of accessors. Accessors are actually those which I mentioned, the integer string or a function. And they say that in the pluck exists, we have actually only two arguments. The three dots, which is supporting dynamic dots as well, uh, they, I think they don't mention some kind of if element in here. Um, I think this is the only possibility with some kind of bang bang. Some uh, we design some custom function and then we do that. Um, no, I don't think there is some kind of if functionality in it because in in the other functions coming up. They have um, these three dots reserved for the future. So maybe there is something coming up in other functions, but in here, I'm not sure. So, okay. Um, so, uh, and then comes the chuck function. This actually is used to um, check that if you get an element deep in the nested sector. Um, this actually is kind of similar to plug, but it will give error if we have um, if the if the name of the list doesn't exist. So, for example, I if I repeat this the same list, and then I get the second element, we can get the same thing with the help of the chuck function. And notice that in here we do not need to mention some kind of uh, um, list again. Like in the plug, we we need to men we needed to mention this uh, like some kind of the name of the list. But in here, if I use the plug uh, chuck function and I say that that said just give me the second element, it will give the output. So what I was saying that if we give the wrong name to our chuck function, it will show some kind of error. And let me show that what kind of error it shows. I have a code here. So under the chuck function, yeah, this one. Uh, if I apply that, it says that the index one is attempting to plug from an unnamed vector. So, uh, 
it 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 strictly follows that the names of the our um, accessors actually follows with what names we have given in our nested structures, and because of that we can uh, we cannot use the index more than the given. So uh, the functionality kind of same, but the main difference is actually the easiness to get the elements from the list. Well, so and the you know, in your um yeah. in the code in the RMD, yeah, is it so when you chuck X papers, if you change yes. that to pluck rather than chuck, is it that you get null, and like it doesn't yeah explicitly fail? So you could think kind of everything's fine because yeah. you're doing it in a bigger pipeline with like a map or like if you're doing more things with pluck okay. like you wouldn't get that error that tells you this this has def this has failed um yeah. but if they are in if papers were in there so if you went for something else that wasn't there, i forget what's in x currently whether it's elt or whatever it is but if you try to chuck and pluck that and they're both in there then they'll they'll function the same yeah i think so Let's, let's do that. So str words, it should work fine. What's the name? No, it doesn't. Index one is attempting to plug from an unnamed vector using a string hmm. name. If you chart, so, if you type, is it we need x two and then. Style. If you type, if you print out X into the console, because I, I personally have forgotten what's actually in X at the moment. X is actually that one which uh, which has two columns. Yeah. The... So you'd need to look in X comma two comma Star Wars for Chuck. Yeah. Cause... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why it was giving like for the one I cannot print the index. Yes. And then what was you were saying that we can use the plug, it should work fine for this one. Yeah, and, and that will kind of be your difference is like they'll function the same when it all works, but if there if there was an error, then pluck will error silently, like it won't tell you. And if there is, then chuck it will tell you, it'll let you know. And it won't it won't follow up with the rest of what it has to do. Yeah. But this, this uh, to your question, uh, Jack, like does pluck doesn't really error, right? It just returns a null. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It's like it, it yeah. just it proceeds quietly. Like it doesn't let you know that it couldn't get right. a thing. So it, it seems like so in the documentation that I was just looking at this, I just pulled it up as as, as I was presenting, and, and um, the kind of one liner description for this the pluck family is this is safely get or set an element deep within a nested structure. So he, here, like if, I don't know, I'm being really pedantic, it's like not safely in the sense of how per defines it, because doesn't, we haven't gotten to this yet, but for the adverbs, you know, with, with safely, I think you end up getting like this, this nested structure where you have one, one set. So you have like one, one, one list that has sub list one of the sublists will be the actual return values in which in the cases where you get it and then you'll have another one that's errors right so it's sort of like safely in the sense that your operation continues silently but mm -hmm. somehow you're not really really informed that there's an error i guess maybe if it's a simple list like a null is a non-ambiguous sign that it's failed because you couldn't have a null element in a list i don't know does, it, does, does that make any sense what I'm I'm saying or asking? Yeah, well, say, so like when you're mapping, say you're not doing anything that's like plucking even, you might want to use safely because you don't know, say if you quit hitting an API, like you don't know that the thing's going to come back as you're predicting, but you don't want your pipeline or everything to fail if somewhere down the line it hits an error. So you can use, from what I remember, I haven't used it in a while, but you can use safely in, say, like your map to when you find an error, just like skirt over it. So like keep going. Um, 
And yeah, that would seem to be different to the safely as it's used in the docs here, which I think was what you were saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it, it, it's like right. safely in the sense that your, your code continues merrily on, right? But then you just have to infer that things failed from have from finding a null value, I guess. Yeah, I and you got so in Pluck, you've got like that default thing which you could change. Because I think, can you not have a, a null in a list? I think you can, right? Or oh, can you? Okay, I, I've I, I I'm not sure. Maybe you can't. I I thought you could. Um, because yeah, I was lucky. The default thing might be to differentiate it. It's like. So in the Chuck, they actually say that there is a line in here that they say if, if the index you are trying to access does not exist or is null, it will throw the Chuck an error. Uh huh. It will throw. Yeah, an error. That, that's the what I'm getting. I think, or what I was getting at before, is just that Pluck and Chuck are like basically the same thing when it's all working. Yeah. It's just Chuck yeah. gives you this. This sometimes like a nice property that like you know your things failed, and then with safely right. If you were like I remember we had it before we were doing something on a package, and we were having to hit this API, and it's the first time we were like working with APIs, so we were probably not doing it the absolutely correct way, but we would, there was a map in there somewhere, and if like the API failed too many times, um because we weren't writing to a file into intermediately like we probably should have been, you could get like 20 minutes into this thing that keeps hitting this API to get all the way through. And then it hits an error 20 minutes in and like you lose everything because you we naively weren't like saving our process. Whereas if you had safely, it would be like, fine, um, hit an error, but don't worry, just go on to the next thing. But I think I might be repeating myself there. Okay, so I have tried that just like uh, giving the wrong index. But I was saying before that we can write a message in the dot default. The Chuck actually does that by default. It states that the length of the plucked object is 21, but actually it is 2. So instead of using the by dot default, dot default message, we can use the chuck function but for that we need to know uh like if, if we want the error to show or not okay um and then comes the plug depth this is actually used to check uh, the depth of our nested structure so for example if in my this list with multiple lists in here I can show the structure of this list as this one. Uh, and then I use the plug depth to find that the depth of the from the start to the end is five. And they say that if we use the map integer function and then the plug depth for this list in a uh, combined or you can say in the piped code, we get the depth for all of the list inside our list. So that's why we are getting this one, which is actually this list of one, then two, uh, sorry, this one was the first, and then we have a depth of two in here, and then the depth of this final element from one, two, three, four. So, it can be used in this way as well, or either we can use it from the start to finish and combine it to get the depth of our whole combined uh, nested success. Okay, and then there are some two functions, a modify in and assign in, and then there, it, at the end of the document, they have two other functions, list modify and list assign. The functionality is kind of same, like, if, for example, in the assign in, we replace the element in the list and the list is modified. But in modify in, we just show the output, but the actual lists remain intact. Okay, so in the assign in, we have these three elements, uh, three arguments. 
where we say that we come we say that we need to uh sorry we need to provide the list and then we can say that how we want to assign a new element inside our existing x list so in here i use again the my old list with two columns from the two different data frames in this list which is this one i assign one new element which comes as here what will be the uh, input of that this is the output of that this 100 so where we want to put where the list where the assigned value goes and what will be the value so assigning comes in handy in that and because of that our uh, list is modified that's why they in the documentation they say that you can delete as well the value which we have which you have just added that's why i have put the same value in here and use the zap function to delete it so the original link list comes back to its own previous format um yeah so the modify in is kind of same but functionality is a bit different that the original list is not modified because of that so for example in this simple list there is only two named elements bar and four and i modify that with the help of modify in with this list such that this while list each element uh, when the named value is four combine uh, multiply that by 200 so because of that the value becomes from two to 400 in here so and it doesn't modify what i actually said that doesn't modify our, our original list so if i print the y after that even after using the modify in the original list still remains intact so both of these have same kind of same arguments but in the modify in we have the functionality to use a function to modify our list and then some three dots for the dot f okay and then go uh, comes the attribute getter function uh, this is actually handy to get the attributes from our list such as the names of the elements which we have then if we have the named list we can get the attributes from that or, or we can get the attributes from our data frames as well so for example in the empty cars data set row names is one of the attributes and i can use this attribute getter on empty cars data set to get the uh, attributes from that data set or we can use that on our customized list so for example again going back to the that object one and object two list these two are the attributes in this object one list and object two list and i want to get this attribute from either one either one either one of the list so what i do is i combine in the documentation they say that we can combine with the plug plug function because in the plug we have the possibility to use a function in here in this third uh, argument i use this one and then use the name of the attribute to get the element from that so that's why in my first object one i get the i use the name of the attribute to get the element four so and again yeah, i can use that on the second list in my x list to get the element bar so it can be helpful if we know the names of our attributes or we can use some general attributes of our data frames which are common in all the data frames okay and then Chuck, starts the, yeah. I, so when i was reading the docs i i mean i didn't i couldn't spend too much time on it but when I was looking up modify in and assign in, at first I didn't really see like why there was two functions. Um, 
But am I right in saying that with a sign in, like you need to know precisely what value you want to put in where, like the name of something or like an integer value. Um, and then in modify, it's just you apply a function to that thing, like whatever bit of the list you want to modify, you, you, you just put in a function to transform it rather than like an explicit value. Like, is that the difference or is, is there more to it? Um, I think this is the main difference because you see the format of this application. This is kind of similar in uh, which is which we used in the map character or map integer in our previous cohorts. Mm -hmm. So, but in assign in, we do not have that. There is no in the documentation, there is this one is actually given in the documentation. There is no option of uh, putting dot f somewhere. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just trying to think of the use case. It's like, um, I don't know, I guess maybe you've got a list of like your school's grades or something, for example. Yeah. And maybe you realized that you'd like made a mistake in one. So you can go to a sign in, find yeah. like oh, that student, this test, this day. Yeah. Put yeah. the value and there. Then modify or maybe no. When you need to go uh, from modify to the sign. As, I, as far as I think, because modify will not uh, modify your original list as far as the examples are given in the documentation. So it wouldn't return, if you, if you assign the output of, because what I'm thinking is say like you got this exam, well, I'm trying to think like a real use case, you got this exam idea and you realize you'd made a mistake in a student's exam so you need to go into the list where you store it and you assign a new value which is the corrected one but then let's say like you realized you'd set the exam too hard for all of the students in this yeah. exam you could use modify in or something to like apply a function to all of them which says for that exam like add 10 percent and mm -hmm seems like that's kind of why you'd want to use one over the other um but I, like i said it wasn't really sure or it wasn't that clear in my head as i was going through it like how they really differ um or on a practical level i don't know if anyone uses them or has used them before and could, could like offer an explanation or something for your use case jack about modifying like in or an exam grade or something would so i guess you would want to like iterate over all elements at a certain depth wouldn't you want to use like modified depth instead because it feels like for modify in and assign in it's like particular coordinates right within within this this nested list structure and i guess it's just at least my understanding is like just targeting one one coordinate um Maybe. You, sorry, targeting one coordinate is in assign in or is in modify. That's a good one. Um, so I mean, if if you're like in your case of like you made the exam too hard and and you want to you know give everyone ten percent more for their grade, let's say yeah, that would be that'd be a modify operation. And so then the like the modify in I guess would work for for one particular element in your in your nested list but i guess modified depth maybe if you could somehow localize or wait am i wrong about this because yeah, what i'm thinking though is your your pluck location so like say i yeah. i think i get what you mean you know with the assign in you're assigning one person so your pluck location is say like depth three i would yeah. be thinking like you say like if i'm modifying then i'll be doing the modification at uh depth no. two, which would be no, you're you're uh, understanding it opposite and sign in will modify your list. Modify with use some kind of function to show that you can do do that, but it will not modify your list. That's why I I applied this modify in or on our by list this list, but the actual list remains unchanged. 
Okay, yeah. So you do. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you said a minute ago, Shri. I think you said you do modify in first, and then yeah. you do a sign in. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I thought like for modify in um it 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 well so a sign in is clear to me like a sign in you're just changing a value to the value yeah. that you're assigning right modify in yeah. you're you're applying a function to a yes. particular place right but ultimately yeah. I think the the li the list changes doesn't it um list is just... change unless you use some kind of uh, assignment operator in here. So it seems like from the docs, it says modify n. So it says applies a function to a pluck location, assigns the result back to that location with a sign n. So I think it's kind of like it evaluates your function, I guess, and then assigns that value via a sign n. So it's like modify n is, I guess, a wrapper of sorts, or, or at least wraps part of a sign n. That's, that's my understanding, but I could be very, very wrong. No, it seems that I, like I'm getting that when I read the docs, the same thing. Um, so I just read the bit for modifying, like you said, assigns the result back to the location with a sign in. And um, to, I think, both your kind of points, like it will return the modified data structure for you. So it won't modify the list in place, like, or without assignment, but neither would like a mutate or a filter or anything to a data frame, but it will return the modified list. So it will make the change and that's what you'll get back. And it's up to you whether you overwrite your original list to you yeah. Know, yeah. give the change. Yeah, that is, that is the actual idea. But how, so you do, 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 do. when you're working on something, what I'm not seem to getting through to like my head is modify in does use a sign in for you like you don't have to use modify and then a sign in yeah because you are using a function that's why you're using some kind of function to modify but in here you you, you are not using an assign in in some kind of function you are directly putting the value that's it so yeah. The idea is actually you can get the value from the modify in, you save some kind of in here, and then you apply the value in here. Because well, you do think... not have a possibility to use dot f in and sign in. No, indeed. But what I think I'm so what I'm going at is like a sign in, yeah, you change the you change the actual value, like you know where you want to go, you, you put in the value that you want and it changes. But then modify in, when you do modify in it does also assign it for you using a sign in it's like you don't you don't need to do that yeah. step right um yeah, yeah. so yeah. arthur maybe to something you said earlier you can't use modify in in the same way that you can use modify depth like you couldn't modify the whole level or something or could you like what would be the difference say between modify depth and modify in Modify depth was some kind of predicate function. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I maybe presented it or did Sarah, um, but maybe I skirted over for it and did, um, did you kind of take it yeah. over, um, Arthur? It was so long ago that I can't, really, can't honestly remember. But um, yeah, so there is some. The tree modified tree was the recursive version, like it says, that allows you to apply a function to every leaf or every node. So modify depth and modify in, how are they like specifically different? Um, that's why I, that's what I'm now confused by. Before I was just confused by how sign in and modify in are different, but I can get that now. But now I'm not seeing the immediate difference. Is it like it? modify in just as one specific location like rather than the whole but then if the specific location is a list wouldn't it do it to everything in that list like does modify in have to change one value only or will it change a whole list if you find a list at the dot where uh, the where argument in modify in is actually accepting the plug location 
So plug location can be at any depth in your list. Yeah, and say say you do like uh, modify in a certain depth. Yes. Like yeah, at any depth. Three. Plug location sets any depth in your list. It is it is just the just using the plug brackets brackets depth and that's it. It is just like that. Yeah. And so, but say if, if I'm, um, if at my like depth two, there is a list, then yes. at depth three, there will be the elements of the list. And mm. if I apply the modify in at depth two, does it apply the function to everything in depth three? It's kind of what I mean. Like, what no, does it act no. on or what can it, it will act only on? apply to one of the depths because in the plug location, you can only say one one thing, like you can say one, two, which I, which I just showed you before. Um, like uh, you have an option in the plug to put one, two. So it goes in this depth and then it goes into the depth what was in that element of that depth. So you cannot say from one to depth number something. But you can say, so like, say if you take out the number two there, like yes. that's the the second, like if it's like a two, two like depth list, right? You've got the first um, element of that first list and then you've got the second element of the first list. But if you get rid of that two, then you've just got the first element of the list, which includes the first and second element at the next depth. So like if you were to, instead of, if you pluck X one there, instead of plucking X one, two, you'll get X one, one and X one, two. And I think the question that I'm trying to figure out is like, if I do some stuff in modify in, uh, like pluck X one, will it do it to X one, one and X one, two? Or does it not work like that? Can it not like, can it only do single values or or how will it work? Kind of a, a way, another way to state that question, at least to my mind is like, there is a, is there a map pluck in a certain sense? <laughs> Where like, I want the second, the second element of every list, right? Um, is there a way to do that? Well, I think you could combine them, but I don't think that's what I'm getting at. Um, you can in a in a different function if you're mapping stuff, you can you can map over a list of like lists and get the second element in all of them. But um, I don't know. Maybe I should just have some code to to try to figure this out. Um, but say say from your understanding after if you do modify depth right like at depth two you change everything that's at depth two but if you do modify in at the pluck that pulls out the same thing at depth two like what happens or what gets transformed is it that the pluck location has to return an atomic item rather than a list because it doesn't like that's not how pluck works. Say if you've got a list column in your data and you pluck that list, then it will just return the list. And then, but you could go in and go, okay, from that list, give me the first thing in the next list. And um, I don't know, I might not be asking this question very well. I've, I've tried something, but I think it's a bit different from that. Like from the pluck location, instead of using the named this this element in my list, I used different pluck location. Or maybe I can say exceeding that. I can actually add a list at any pluck location or mod, or uh, which is actually modifying my list. So that's why I get this one list, which is the original list. Then there is a null because in the second 
position, there is no list. There is only one list. There is only one position. And then it adds one new list at the location number three. But this thing is actually not going on in here. The function is not applying on this my new location. So this needs some kind of modification, but it is modifying my list and it is giving me the new modified uh, list. Yeah, you got like null times 200. But say say here, right, if you go to, um, if you put list two and then you take away foo. So like what happens to... What does this return? Like if you if you do this and then print Z, Give me is this. it that you get one hundred one times two hundred and two times two hundred? I get this one because we are using this to put that that we are applying the function on our list. Yeah. So what what does this return when you run it now? Like. This one, Zero. Use me this. you are seeing it here. So why does it return? Is that because there was nothing there? So if you put list one instead of list two, what does this one is actually delete this one? I think so. The original list. Uh, yeah. Are, no, no, okay. It, not it has not. deleted that because and... in the position one we had this. So why can't it multiply one by this the two num one num two? But what are the actual values? If you so if you instead of structure z, if you print z after that that you just did, what does z look like? Uh, you want only z without structure? Yeah, without structure. Okay. Looks like this. Okay. So that's, <laughs> so it's just times nothing by 200 and then put zero. Yeah. And so ugh, you can't put modify in list one because that brings out an error. It says it's like yes. a non, so it can't it, do it a list. It has so to do in a specific Because place. it is applying from here to like to the right side. That's why when it has modified the original list, then there is no point multiplying by 200 of nothing. Yeah, but it kind of does it. No, it, it puts out this second thing, which is like, it just creates a, a zero value. But if you were to put like modify depth, and then okay. you were to put depth equals one and you were to do this um, or like dot depth equals one. This would modify, this would times one and two by 200. And then, oh well, no. Mm. I'm going to have to play this myself to see what's going That's on. Kind of Kind of very different. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah so, sorry for derailing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think we have only like four minutes remaining. Is it one hour the meeting or? Yeah, it's it's um it's one hour. So I mean, perhaps we shouldn't go like try to rush into, um, the other vector transformations and maybe just call it here early because i think accumulate and uh reduce are really fun so they we can we can tackle them next week okay cool i'm just gonna put stop in the